one of the things I wanted to do here for a while is do a video about motivation and about looking towards the future on Redbubble. So what I want to do first is just type in Redbubble and we've got our websites, right? But what I encourage you to do is to type in Redbubble Investor and there's Investor Relations. We we'll go to this Investor Presentation, Redbubble Investor Presentation. And second one down, the first one's an ad for Redbubble, obviously. But the second one down, second Google result is Investor Presentations. And normally what happens is when people click on investor presentations, their eyes glaze over and they think, oh my goodness, it's going to be 45 minutes of statistics and numbers and old boring businessmen talking about share prices. But I would encourage you to read these management presentations. They're actually pretty cool. So I'm going to do a quick highlight because I think it's important to take a look to the future. Now, the first thing I want to look at is the annual report. So when I click on annual report on the left hand side, I'm going to get a number of different years. And then underneath October 13th, 2020 is the annual report for 2020. So a lot of people don't know this, but Redbubble is actually a publicly traded company. They trade on the Australian Stock Exchange. So one of the things that's really cool is that we can look through the different annual reports because they're a publicly traded company, they're a publicly facing company and their earnings and their expenses and their future outlook is written in an annual report. So I'm going to click on this annual report and it's going to come up here. And basically it's a PDF file. So you can just kind of look through it at your leisure. I've looked at it as well on like a mobile device. So it's pretty easy to read. So this is the annual report. Now the first thing that I want to do is just highlight. If you scroll on down, there's a lot of graphics, there's a lot of pictures and it's basically a, you know, it's a pretty hefty report. It's a 63 pages long, but I wanted to go to, and there's financial stuff and I'm not going to cover financial stuff. So if you're thinking I'm going to start talking about share prices and stuff, don't worry, it's not going to happen. But I would like to go to page 10 and 11 here because on page 10 and 11, I can just see the page numbers down at the bottom. What I really like here is just their growth over time. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is just, you can see here, FYI 16, FYI 17, that just means the year. So it's 2016, 2017, 2018. And you can see the growth over time. This is the growth transaction value by region. And again, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details here, but you can see there's like, you know, the EU, there's the United Kingdom, there's that sort of thing. And the percentage of total business. And you can see how it's growing over time. This is in millions of dollars here between 2016 and 2020. You can see the growth over time. This is most likely going to continue. So in 2021, that bar might end up here. And in 2022, that bar might end up here. And in 2030, who knows? The bar might go sky high. So one of the things I'd like to encourage you to do is when, you know, and we all do, we all get frustrated from time to time is think about the future and think you're not only updating and uploading designs for today, but you're updating and uploading designs for tomorrow and next year and the year after that. There's designs that I uploaded a couple years ago that are now consistent sellers. They weren't back then, but they've since grown and they've gotten into search engine optimization and somebody somewhere has pinned it in their Pinterest account and somebody somewhere has shared it on Facebook. And the next thing you know, it's a, it's a good seller. The other thing I wanted to point out is this flywheel dynamics. This is pretty neat. So the idea here with flywheel dynamics is that it's like a loop. And so loyal customers purchase products, they're able to fulfill them properly. And as a result, it pays artists and the artists then are motivated like myself. I'm an artist. I'm motivated to put more content into the paradigm into the red bubble universe. And as a result, more customers show up. So when you think about, you know, back five years ago, red bubble was a lot smaller and five years from now, red bubble will be a lot bigger. And so again, we want to think about, this is a good thing, right? I know it feels very competitive and you're going, Oh man, you know, there's lots of designs, but that's actually what we want because the more designs on red bubble, the more driving of traffic comes to red bubble. We can see over here, they even walk through this. It says it's a flywheel because the more artists in the marketplace, the more relevant content and for the more reason for customers to come. 
the more customers, the better the fulfillment becomes. And that's them physically printing the products and shipping them. And this in turn brings back more customers. And with more customers, more artists are attracted. So this is a great, you know, sort of self-perpetual motion machine, you know, for artists and for, for clients. So you want an overall healthy model. And that's certainly what this is looking like. I just want to scroll on down here as well to the profitable growth section. So this is on page down at the bottom. You can see the page numbers page 12 and page 13. So we can see here the marketplace revenue. I'm just going to scroll in here a tiny bit so you can see this a bit better. The marketplace revenue from 2016 through to 2020 has grown pretty significantly. In fact, it's more than doubled. In fact, it's even almost, you know, I'd say, oh, it has, it's tripled. So 115 up through 349. Again, this is millions of dollars. You can see here the gross profit is also very much increased. And we can see this is a really important metric. This is called operating e EBITDA. And it's basically the cash before distributions. And so this used to be negative, right? In 2016, they were running basically, a, you know, a measure of profitability was in the negative and in the last two years it's actually gotten profitable and pretty profitable and so what this means is that their operating fund is growing you know overall and, and not, no one of these metrics stands alone but when you look at all of these metrics in conjunction it certainly feels like Redbubble's future is bright they're continuing to grow their products they're continuing to become more profitable they're continuing to you know grow their footprint throughout the world so that's pretty neat another thing here as well is the different amounts of products so check out page 11 here i'm just going to get i'm going to scroll in so you can see this a bit better there's the products on redbubble this is really neat it's kind of buried here again this is at the bottom of page 11 but you can see the categories in 2019 and 2020 and this is the categories of marketplace revenues. This is based on who sold what. And you can see, and I was surprised to see this, t-shirts is down at the bottom. It's 30%. I think when most people think of Redbubble, they think it's t-shirts and other stuff. Well, that's not necessarily the case. The metrics are showing us here that homewares actually has quite a lot. And artwork has quite a lot. And accessories and other apparel, stationery and stickers. Now, whether this is selling or not, of course, we can argue and we can say, well, you know, yeah, there's people listing stuff, but they're not selling. But Redbubble is acknowledging that there's more listings of other items. And what that means is, as Redbubble continues to grow, chances are good they're going to continue to add more products. They're going to continue to promote more products. It won't just all be, be about the t-shirts. And that's really encouraging for artists that you know, want to sell water bottles and stickers and magnets and things like that. Who knows what other products will come? The other thing that I want to do, I'm just going to close out of this investor's presentation. But again, this thing goes on for pages and pages. So I would encourage you to have a read of this thing. It's pretty neat. The other thing that I wanted to point out is on this investor relations page where it says annual reports, there's also investor presentations. So I'm going to click on investor presentations. This is a little more um, user-friendly version, I guess I want to say. It's a little more designed for the civilians and so like myself. So I'm going to click on this AGM management presentation from October 28th, 2020. And when I click on that, I get another PDF file, but it's not so numbers driven. This is, if you can imagine being at like a, a boardroom or in an investor's presentation, like in a conference hall, this is what would be presented on the big screen and somebody would talk about this in more detail. And this is really designed to attract either new investors or, you know, to reassure existing investors. So, you know, if you were a shareholder, you know, you may get a copy of this in the mail or you may attend the investor's uh, the investors convention that would talk about this. So this is a little more easy to read, right? It's got a lot more pictures. It's sort of a user friendly version of the world of Redbubble. So I wanted to point out here, just as we go through this one, that, you know, COVID-19 is something that we can't really ignore. And what we think is going to happen, again, this is Redbubble saying this, but I happen to agree, is that we can see here over time, the little blue line is online retailers. We'll look at the nice spike here over the last 12 months. And the reason for that is most likely due to the pandemic of COVID-19. The question is, will this continue once the pandemic's over? 
and chances are good it will. I think when most people learn that they can order something online and get it shipped in high quality and high speed, chances are good they're going to return. And so this bodes well for the future of Redbubble. I know it's, you know, it's sad. To, of course, the pandemic is sad, but Redbubble has used the unfortunate circumstance to help grow their business. The circumstances have allowed it to grow, and that's, that's a good thing. So I did want to point out as well, as we scroll on through here, we can see the same sort of underlying information is now presented in a user friendly format here in this investor presentation. We can see here as well, the marketplace revenue growth has accelerated and will continue to grow. And we can see here it's a global marketplace with different regions. And just again, look at that growth over time, right? What's 2021 going to look like? What's 2022 going to look like? Here we talk about the flywheel dynamics again. That's where the Redbubble is saying that loyal customers mean more fulfillment. More fulfillment means more payments to artists. And that motivates people like myself to put up more product and high quality product. And that will attract loyal customers. You can see here that the growth over time is pretty good. Now I did want to point out as well, as I scroll on through here, one of the things that I really want to focus on and just mention is that they mentioned right here, there are 117 physical products currently on offer with many more to come. So who knows what more products Redbubble will have. I remember when I first started on Redbubble, there were no backpacks. There were no masks. There certainly weren't iPhone 10s because they didn't exist back then. So who knows in the future what new products will come up. So it's something to think about that you're not only designing for today, but you're designing for the future as well. And so I want you to keep that in mind in those dark moments when you get depressed and you know, we've all been there. We're working away on these going, does anybody care? They will, they may not care today, but remember when you're uploading a design, you're uploading it for today, tomorrow, a year from now, maybe five years from now. And so it's a cumulative effort to grow your shop and to grow your brand within the Redbubble framework because you're going to attract more followers and you never know when that one design is going to get shared and then shared again. And all of a sudden it's at a convention somewhere or it's being used in some capacity that we had no idea. And the next thing you know, it's driving sales. So I hope that helps. I just wanted to throw it out there that we can stay motivated. We can stay positive because the future is quite bright and we can use these you know, financial documents to sort of reaffirm our mindset that the future is spread. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you like what you saw today, please do hit the subscribe. And as always, I very much appreciate comments, questions, interaction in the forum there down below. So feel free to get involved. Thank you so much for watching guys.